Today I'm teaching you the five things you need to know to start editing your photos in Lightroom. I'll show you how you can take a photo like this and make it look like this. Let's do this. Hey there, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm teaching you photography and how to start a creative business. I wanna say a special hi to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Okay, today we're covering a big one. Let's talk about Lightroom. Lightroom is a really powerful software for photo editing, but when you first look at it, it can be really intimidating. Today, I'm breaking down the five things you need to know so that you can start editing your photos in Lightroom. This guide is aimed for beginners, but if you're an intermediate photographer, you're gonna learn something too. I'll be breaking down importing your photos, cropping and the different crop tools Lightroom has, basic adjustments like white balance, highlights, and shadows. We'll tackle the tone curve and how to fine tune your images. And finally, we'll take a look at the hue, saturation, and lumens panel and learn how to perfect the colors in your photos. We're going to go through all the things one by one and I'll explain them in depth. I'll share my raw file that I'm using in the description so you can go ahead and download that, import that into Lightroom, and follow along. All right, let's get started. Let's go ahead and open up Lightroom on our computer. When you first open Lightroom, you're not gonna have any photos. So the first thing we need to do is import some photos. Make sure that you're in the library module up here and then come down to the bottom left side and click import. Now that we're at the import screen, we have three main sections. On the left side, we have the source where the photos are coming from. Then we have the photos themselves in the middle and on the right, we have where the photos are going. So let's go ahead and select our source. Usually it's gonna be a memory card or a folder on your hard drive. Let's go into our downloads folder and import the photos I shared in the description. On the right side here, there's also an option to build previews. Lightroom creates previews so that you can edit your photos. Lightroom doesn't change the actual photo file, so it needs to build previews in order for you to edit. For now, let's go ahead and select standard previews. There's some other options on the right that you can check, but we're not going to go into this in this video. You can add presets to your photos here and add keywords, but let's keep it basic for now. Once you've got the photos selected, go ahead and hit import. You'll see the top right here, there's a progress bar with your photos importing and previews building. Once that's done, your photos have been added to your Lightroom catalog. Here's your basic folder structure in Lightroom. This is how you stay organized. I can make a whole video just on the catalog, so for now we're just going to skip this part. Down here is your film strip. This shows all the photos you have in a specific folder in Lightroom. It's really useful to navigate quickly to certain photos. Let's go up here where your different modules are. Right now, you can see we're in the library module. This is basically where you can look at all your photos and see all the information they have. On the right here, we can scroll and see all the metadata in the file. We're not really concerned about this for the sake of this video, so let's start editing. If you want to edit photos in Lightroom, you need to be in the develop module. So we can go up here and click on the develop, or we can hit D on our keyboard and it'll take us there. All right, finally, we can start editing. I'm gonna try and make this part as easy as possible to follow. There are a lot of different sliders and options in here, and most of these you don't really end up using. You can get an awesome looking photo by just using a handful of these tools. Okay, first things first, let's get the crop on this photo right. Come up here and hit the rectangle or hit R on your keyboard to go into the cropping menu. So here we can do a few things. We can change the area of the photo we want in the frame by dragging a corner. Then we can go to the middle of the photo and drag the box and position it how we like it. If we want to change the aspect ratio, let's go over here and select the aspect ratio you want to use. If you're posting on Instagram, you're most likely going to be using 4x5. Now if we want to change the orientation of the photo and go from horizontal to vertical or vertical to horizontal, all we have to do is press X on our keyboard. This will change the orientation for you and it gives you even more control in cropping. If we go to an edge here, we can adjust the angle of the photo. If our photo isn't straight, we can straighten it out right now. We can also go over here to the right and click on auto and let your remote guess and straighten out your photo for you. Lastly, if you hit O on your keyboard, you can go and change the type of grid line you have. Lightroom has all these different layouts built in and by pressing O, you can cycle through these and pick the one that will help your composition the most. So that's cropping in a nutshell. Lightroom has a lot of useful tools here that can help you get the perfect crop. Next up, your basic adjustments. First, we need to get the white balance right. Click on this dropper icon and then select a neutral gray part of your image. Click on that and Lightroom will give you a guess of what it thinks is the right white balance. If your photo still looks too blue or yellow, do some finer adjustments here. And if the photo looks too green or pink, you can change that as well. Moving along, up here we've got the histogram. I go in depth into this in my histogram video, but basically this is a graph of all the light in your image. On the left side here, we have the blacks and shadows. On the right, we have the whites and highlights, and this corresponds directly to the sliders down here. So first, we can change the overall exposure and it will affect all the parts of the image. We can use this for general brightening or darkening. If you want to change just one part, like the highlights, we can drag this slider. We can see up here that the histogram is lit up and the highlights on the photo are changing. A lot of the time, you're gonna to wanna to lower the highlights and increase the shadow so you can bring in more details into your image. As I move the shadow slider, you can see all the darker parts lighten up and you get more detail. You need to be careful not to change the shadows too much so the photo doesn't look too washed out. 
Okay, moving down to the whites and blacks, these are for the far ends of your histogram. I usually move these around to add contrast to the image. If I up the exposure a lot, I'm going to want to add more black so that I can add in contrast. Whites I would touch if I want to brighten or darken any white parts of the photo. You'll notice I didn't really talk about the contrast slider. I prefer to control the white and black to add contrast, but you can use a contrast slider at the end if you need to. One quick tip before you move on, if you want to know what your photo looked like before you started editing, just hit backslash on your keyboard and you can quickly jump between the raw file and your current edit. It took me way too long to learn this trick, so I'm including this in this video to help you out. Alright, next up. Down here we have your texture, clarity, and dehaze. Clarity is sometimes good at bringing out more detail in a photo. Use this sparingly and never overdo it. The texture is exactly what you would think. It increases the texture in the photo. Again, don't overdo this. It's pretty common for beginners to try and crank these up, but then the photo starts to look overly edited, and no one wants that. Dehaze is sometimes useful for removing haze out of landscapes or cityscapes, but I really try to avoid using it because it can destroy your images. Okay, now vibrance and saturation. Use these only if the colors look washed out or bland. If you think you need more color, try bringing up the vibrance first. And if the photo still needs work, then go ahead and add saturation. All right, so that's basic adjustments. We've covered three out of five of the basic areas of Lightroom so far. Knowing these first three things is really the biggest part of editing. You can get your photos 90% of the way there by just knowing these basic adjustments. These next two things we're learning will help take your photos to that next level. Okay, this next one's a little tricky, but I'll try and make it as basic as possible. Let's do the tone curve. The tone Tone curve lets you get a bit more specific with the adjustments to your photo. Similar to the basic adjustments, it controls the areas of your photo like highlights and shadows, but you can get even more specific here. I like to start by selecting this white circle up here. The basic tone curve shape you want is a slight S curve. For that, I'll add one point up here in the highlights, drag up a bit, I'll add one in the center here, and then add a final point in the shadows and drag it down a little bit. By doing this, I've added some contrast to the image. Let's see how this looks before and after the tone curve. Let's click this button here to see what difference actually made. We can see it add more contrast to the image and it looks a lot better now. You can mess around with this yourself and practice and see what you come up with. For now, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. It's going to get really advanced, so it's going to be a topic for a new video later on. Okay, our last and final step here, HSL or Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. Here we have all the individual colors present. We can control each slider and change just that color. Now this can get really powerful and you can create some awesome custom photos in here. Hue changes the hue of the color. So here on the yellow slider, we have yellow in the middle, but if we go to the left, we can turn the yellows into orange, and if we go to the right, we can turn those yellows to green. The same concept applies all the way down for all the colors. You can go really crazy and customize a photo here. Next, we have saturation. Here you can control the individual colors as well. So let's say you have a photo where the yellows aren't popping enough, but all the other colors look good. We can go in and crank the saturation up on the yellows and make those pop. This is an awesome creative tool for final adjustments. Finally, the luminance. Luminance is basically how bright each color will be. So what we can do is we can individually darken or brighten all the colors here. It's really cool stuff. Combining hue, saturation, and luminance, you can get photos that will have a unique look to you. Here's an example of one photo I did where I went pretty crazy with the sliders and took out a lot of colors. Here's the same photo with none of the sliders adjusted. You can see how big a difference it makes. Okay, I wanna cover one last thing and that's exporting. I have a whole video on this, so if you wanna know the best settings, check that out. But for now, let's go into Lightroom again. Go up here to the file menu, click export, and then you can quickly export your photo. If you wanna know the best settings here, check out my video on that topic. Okay, so those are the five things you need to know to get started in Lightroom. Just knowing those five will allow you to do most things in this awesome editing software. Lightroom will allow you to take your photos to the next level. A lot of the magic in photography happens in the edit, and it's not uncommon to spend hours on a photo just trying to perfect it. Keep these five things in mind and you're gonna improve fast. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, please drop a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I think it's awesome that you're trying to learn more about photography and better yourself. Good luck out there, and I'll see you in the next video.